Well, good evening, River Church. How are you? Oh, I wish you could answer me. <laughs> that day will come soon. But just for now, just know that I miss you and that Lydia and I think of you often and we're praying for you and, and we look forward to, to being able to give you all one big collective hug here one of these days soon. So there's a phrase I've been thinking about and I use it sometimes when I preach and some of you are familiar with it. Let me just remind you of the phrase. I say this, I said, say that we need to be both, both uh, present and pleasant. Uh, present and pleasant, right? Uh, we live, we're in a time right now where it's pretty easy to be present. I mean, especially if you live with family members and you got other people in the house, like there ain't nowhere to go, right? We live in an era where we celebrate, hey, I drove a car today, right? <laughs> uh, not a whole lot of places to go. That's the point. Uh, so being present is pretty like easy. We're all pretty available right now. But, but are you pleasant as well? I tell you, if you'll bless others in your home around you by being both pleasant and present, It'll come back to you. You'll you'll be the beneficiary as well. So just be thinking on that, especially you guys, grumpy old guys like me. Man, just work on. It's not enough to be just faithful and be there, be around, but but actually be pleasant and just just celebrate the goodness of, of what we got right now. You know, and and tomorrow it'll be different. Um, I, I want to uh, address uh, a matter of, of security as we continue to do our Bible studies and our prayer, uh, our prayer time, prayer gatherings t together. Uh, we are going to implement some additional uh, uh, security measures regarding how we use Zoom. I, I know, sadly, some churches, some of my friends, some churches have been hacked. We haven't. Uh, River Church hasn't been hacked in any of our meetings. Um, but I know there's some concerns out there, and, and I take those concerns very seriously. We've, we've looked into it, and, and we really believe with some added security measures that we're going to be just fine. I mean, obviously nothing, sadly, is completely foolproof, but we do believe that there are ways for us to really ensure our safety uh, and prevent being hacked and still use the Zoom platform. If I didn't, didn't think it was safe, we would just nix it right now. But, but here, here's what we think we can do. We're going to take the links off of our website. We're absolutely not going to put anything like that on Facebook, that's for sure. Uh, we're going to uh, send you a private email. Those of you whom we know will send you a private email with the link and the password. And then, of course, you know, we'd ask that you not share that with anyone. Uh, and then we believe, uh, oh, and then we're going to have a, uh, there's a, there's a waiting room in which the host will usher you into the meeting once we've identified who you are. And so that's how we're going to, that's how we're going to, that's the approach we're going to take with this. And we feel like that's uh, really safe. Uh, and you'll be getting an email and more information, but we, we want to continue to use that platform if we can do so safely, because it's been a good place for us to pray together. Tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, we're going to have a prayer gathering at noon and a prayer gathering at 8 p.m. You'll be getting the info, info on that in an email. Uh, if you're not getting emails from me, you can go to our website and info at riverchurchrgv.com is where you can send an email and then we'll, we'll give you the link. We'll give you the information. Info at riverchurchrgv.com. So I've been reading through uh, the Bible. You all know that. And um, now I'm into, I'm, I'm reading through the Bible for the year in the 2020. And so now I'm into First Chronicles and poof, it's getting a little bit laborious because now I'm second time through the story of the kings and the nation of Israel, always veering away from God and God drawing them back and veering away from God and God drawing them back. And, and uh, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a rough story, but I've determined that they're really a, a real value in this, in this, these stories of God, of, of Israel's unfaithfulness is we learn the heart of God. We learn what is God really like, and, and I want to point out two things tonight. One is that He is He is tender-hearted. In other words, our our attitudes and our actions can can break the heart of God. Um, not literally, obviously, but they 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 they, they sadden Him. They, they break His heart, much like my your attitudes or actions can break the heart of your parent, your mom or your dad. Just so disappoint them and and hurt them. And, and, and God is tender-hearted, like a like a heavenly father. Like He is the heavenly father, and like a heavenly father, He's tender-hearted. We can break His heart with our with our actions. The second thing we see is that that He is holy. That is His essence. He is holy. His holiness burns white hot to the degree that He hates sin. That that sin angers Him, uh, much like a daddy 
in the kitchen, looking out the window, sees some kind of abuse going out in the, going on out in the street corner. He's going to go out there and do something about it. He's not aloof. He cares deeply. Um, sin and brokenness, um, they, 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 they anger him. That is true with, with God because he is, he is holy beyond measure. So he's tenderhearted. We can break his heart. Uh, he's, he's holy. He's, he takes sin really seriously. So I've been reading in First Chronicles, and this is the passage that I read today. Um, First Chronicles 10, verse 13 says, So Saul died. This is King Saul. Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He failed to obey the Lord's command, and he even consulted a medium. That's a witch. Instead of asking the Lord for guidance. So the Lord killed him and turned his kingdom over to David, son of Jesse. Now, um, first of all, I'm, I'm not online here tonight to tell you that God's going to kill you for your sin. Uh, we live in a new covenant era post after the cross of Christ has taken place. And we trust in Jesus' work on the cross for our forgiveness. God is a merciful God. If you've submitted your life to God, to Christ, then everything that Christ did on the, on the cross was for you. And you're, you're forgiven and you're all brand new again. You're a new creation in Christ. But what we see here, what we see here is a man, King uh, Saul, destined for the throne, head and shoulders above all the rest. He was a, uh, he was handsome, and he was uh, he was tall, and he, everyone noticed him. Everyone wanted to be like him, and yet he struggled with one deadly sin, and that sin was fear. That was fear throughout his life. If you read his life, he would take matters into his own hands because he couldn't wait on the Lord. The Lord would tell him, wait on me. Don't go to battle yet. And he would go to battle because he was afraid that the Lord wasn't ever going to show up. So he had to do it on his own and he would lose. He would lose the battle. Um, he would, he would, the Lord would say, don't, don't move until, until my, the prophet arrives in town and, and hear his counsel. I'm sending counsel through the prophet and King, and King Saul would go, he'd do his own thing. He would just always run ahead. When, when the Lord wouldn't speak to him, he went and talked to a witch. Why? Always, all of his sins revolved around this one issue that he was fearful. He didn't wait on the Lord. He didn't trust that the Lord was going to do what the Lord said he was going to do. So he was always struggling with fear. We see that in the very first story of King Saul. At his coronation, they, the people were looking to coronate him, to parade him through the city, but the crown on his head, they couldn't find him anywhere. You know where they found him? He was he was behind the luggage of I think like the 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 lost and found or the unclaimed luggage at the airport. Just the second he was like back there, hiding, shaking with fear because he wasn't sure he could handle. He was up for for for, for being the king. His his career started with fear and it ended with fear, and that was his deadly sin. So I've just been contemplating in my own life. How do I? How do I just take matters into my own hands? How do I often try to run ahead of God and not wait on the Lord? And how, how does that break the heart of God? When I say, I can't trust you, God, I'm going to have to trust myself. And I don't go see a witch, but when do I go and say, you know what? I, I, can't, I can't trust the Lord, so maybe this person or that counselor or the bank or whatever. Somebody else can give me, they can help me out because God, I can't trust him. I can't wait on the Lord. So tonight, as you prepare for bed, just ask that you would just, just spend some time in prayer and say, Lord, I want to wait on you. I want to trust you in new ways. I want, I want, I want fear. I want to get rid of fear in my life. And I just want to rest in the goodness of the Lord. I want to trust that when I wait on you, you will come through. Love you guys. Rest well tonight.